What's up guys, it's Justin here. Today I'm finally back with another behind the scenes episode and this video is talking about how I capture my audio and the microphones I use. So I haven't actually done it behind the scenes in quite a few months now. I know you guys really like the previous one so also leave a comment down below as to which one you would like to see me do next. Um, and the reason why I'm sitting in my bedroom and filming is because my apartment doesn't actually have any LED panels or soft boxes yet and it is raining outside today so I'm sitting in front of the window right now. So after we get those things sorted out then I can start filming in more places around the apartment. So I decided let's just go ahead with it. So. Here are some microphones that I use that vary in terms of price point. I'm definitely not an audio expert or anything, but I do try to have some good audio in my videos depending on the situation. As always, I'll be leaving a link down below to all the microphones that I mention. I also want to give away one USB mic to you guys out there. Perhaps you want to start making YouTube videos because for the first few years, all I had was a USB mic and I recorded all my videos using that. So as always, the rules to enter are very easy. Just make sure you're subscribed to the channel, leave a like on this video, and also drop a comment down below. And when this video hits 1500 likes, I'll announce a winner in the comment section. So the first mic I have here is my USB desktop mic, and that is the Editor's Keys SL150. It is overall really good in terms of price point. It also sounds great, and most of all, it's very easy to use. You don't need any drivers, and you also can use USB, which means you don't have to get an XLR to USB digital audio converter, which costs extra money and can take up extra space on your desk. Really what it comes down to though is that it sounds great. It doesn't take up too much room on my desk because I don't need anything else except for the USB cable and it also has a shock mount built in which is really nice and very important. It also has a cardioid pickup pattern which is perfect for voiceover so here's a quick sound test. What's up guys, it's Justin here and today I've got a sound test of the Editor's Keys SL150 USB microphone. Moving on, the next mic I have is the one that I try to use in every situation that I can, but it does require more setup and more pieces, including a mic stand right here, and that is what you're hearing this video recorded on. It is mounted right here, right above me, and does record to an external recorder, but this is a Sennheiser MKH416, which I know a ton of your favorite YouTubers have, and it isn't the cheapest mic out there, but the previous mic I had before this was a similar shotgun mic called the MKE 600, which still sounded very good, but I actually do notice that the sound on the MKH 416 does sound noticeably better, and it is kind of the industry standard of microphones. If you're someone who does record a lot of audio and needs an amazing mic, then I can definitely recommend this and I love it. It is a hypercardioid microphone, so it does have to be pointed towards the subject like I have it right above here. But as you can hear, it does sound amazing, and especially in situations where the room is very echoey, I found that the MKH416 in particular did a much better job in terms of isolating the environment compared to my MKE600. Being a microphone that does have XLR, you do have to record it into either a camera that has XLR or an external recorder, and the external recorder that I've had for a few years now is a Zoom H6. It does have quite a few inputs and is complete overkill for what I need, but I got it used. So I essentially just use one input most of the time and I have the microphone record into here and I clap before the beginning and end of each clip. That way I can sync my audio with the camera audio in post. The Zoom H6 does work pretty well and for all the sound tests that you hear of smartphone speakers, I actually use the microphone attachment that you can have right here. But I think 90% of people who are making YouTube videos don't actually need this unless you're recording to multiple inputs a lot. And one thing that I do hate about it is that it still uses AA batteries and this is like the only thing I have that still uses AA batteries. So I hope they make a version with micro USB charging for example and I'll definitely be getting that right away when they do. The next mic I have is probably the one that every single one of those vloggers you see uses and that is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is the new model that just came out and is a successor to the very popular VideoMic Pro with key improvements that I think make it worth it as every problem that was on the previous generation seems to have been fixed in this one. The reason why this mic is so popular for vloggers out there is because it actually mounts straight on the hot shoe and it essentially captures everything both near and far and sounds much better than the microphone in your camera. The VideoMic Pro Plus has some improvements including getting rid of that stupid 9 volt battery in the original generation, which means you can now charge it with micro USB, which is amazing. The battery is rechargeable. And on the back, you also have a couple settings including the 150, the 75, and also the plus 20 and minus 10. And what this microphone actually does is records two tracks of audio. So if you happen to mess up your gain, you can actually just select between the L and R and turn it into mono. That way, if you happen to mix up the settings on your microphone, you still have usable audio. Another great feature that this microphone has is that it actually turns on when you have your camera on and turns off when you turn off your camera. 
because I'm sure a lot of you guys who record YouTube videos as well know that time when you forget to turn on your microphone and recorded a 30 minute video, which turns out you were just capturing to the internal microphone of your camera or no audio at all. But the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus is a microphone that I take with me whenever I travel, so here's a quick sound test. What's up guys, it's Justin here, and this is a test of the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on-camera shotgun microphone. Another mic that I use a lot is the Sennheiser AVX, and this is the wireless lav kit, which I think a lot of YouTubers also have. What this allows you to do is capture audio completely wirelessly, and as you can see, it is a pretty small setup. So how this works is that you can either plug the receiver into your camera via the 3.5 adapter or to XLR and record into something like the Zoom H6 for a bit of better audio processing. But this is a transmitter and it goes in my pocket and the microphone itself, the lav, is clipped underneath my shirt most of the time. And this allows you to capture audio from a distance. So for example, in some episodes where I just didn't have any space to set up my microphone, then I would use something like the AVX. The battery life is actually pretty good. It definitely isn't cheap. But in terms of sound quality that you're getting wirelessly, it sounds pretty good, but compared to a dedicated microphone, it obviously doesn't sound nearly as good when you compare it. I know Sennheiser does have a lot of different models, but this is the newest model, and the reason why I really like it is because it charges via micro USB, so I'm able to just have an external battery pack when I'm on the go and charge this, which is very important, and I'm just waiting for the Zoom H6 to ditch the AA batteries. But otherwise, here's a quick sound test of the Sennheiser AVX. What is up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got the first of many apartment tour related videos, and we're starting out with my bedrooms. I know a lot of the microphone options I've mentioned in this video aren't the cheapest out there, so one microphone for vloggers especially, or just general recording if you have to and want to get an improvement from the built-in microphone of your camera, is the Rode Video Micro. And this is a very tiny microphone that can just go on the hot shoe as well, and it actually does sound not bad for its price. It doesn't require any external powering and it goes straight into the 3.5 mic port of your camera. So this is a microphone that I normally just bring regardless in case everything else doesn't work. So when it comes to how I process my audio in my videos, I actually don't do much editing to my audio at all. I'm really just not an expert in that category and I kind of want to keep that natural sound in my videos as well. So I normally use the MKH416 shotgun mic and record it into the Zoom H6 on a separate SD card. So when I take that to my computer, what I do is I line up the clips and the first thing I do to the audio track is set it to dual mono as opposed to stereo or mono. That way the sound comes evenly out of both sides of headphones or speakers. So that is a very important thing to remember. Also in some situations the boom pole might actually be in the way of my frame because I have to get this microphone very close to me. So depending on the situation I will often mask the microphone out separately but this is only easy to do if you're in a situation where you have a plain wall on one side and it's easily stretchable from the side. That way I'm able to have the microphone as close to me as possible without having a really ugly boom pole coming from the side which I'm sure none of you want to see. In certain situations, I may have to mask out some white noise or background sound, and in that case, I take the audio over to Audacity, and what I do is select a portion for noise cancellation, and then select the entire clip, and that will actually try to eliminate to a degree the white noise or background noise coming into your microphone. I learned that technique over from Ed from TechSource's video. Another thing that I do with sound a ton is perhaps you have a two minute song and the video is 10 minutes, and you need to be able to stretch that song for the entire length. In that case, I drag the audio over to Adobe Audition, and from there, I right-click and insert into multi-track, enable remix on the left side, and type in the approximate length of audio that I need this to stretch to, and it will try to do so. That way, you have a one-minute song stretched out for 10 minutes, and it sounds completely seamless. Another thing that you might have seen me do in the past is record some videos in my car because I think the red interior just has a nice vibrant look to it, and I really like that. So when it comes to recording audio in my car, I've tried a couple things. And the first time I actually used my lav mic and it sounded okay, but it also captured a lot of muffling and just some sound that comes from the car itself. You can also use a Rode Video Micro or also the Video Mic Pro because the problem with the car is that space is limited and you just don't want to have too many things around because getting that camera mounted alone is a huge pain in the ass. In my case, I found it easiest just to record on my iPhone, whether I'm using a manual app or just the auto settings. And I also use a wide angle moment lens like you saw in my iPhone 10 unboxing. That way I'm able to just crop it in post if it doesn't work out because it's just so hard to get the camera to stay still. I bought the suction mount off eBay and also a phone clip and that is what I normally use. But honestly, the suction mount just isn't that good and it broke after using it twice. So let me know down in the comment section below if any of you guys have a suggestion for a good car mount. 
On the topic of audio though, I haven't talked about headphones in quite a while, so when it comes to my audio listening setup, if I wanna sit down and just really enjoy the music, then what I use is my Woo Audio WA7 tube amp connected to my Sennheiser 599 headphones, which actually sound really good in combination with the WA7 amp. The headphone itself just has a really soft and comfortable feel and also a retro look to it. And I think the sound is overall very balanced with a good emphasis on the mids. And when I have it with my WA7, the powered sound just sounds amazing, but it is a very sit down setup. Honestly though, a lot of the times I just listen to my music using speakers, which in my case is the Audio Engine A2 Plus, which I love and have featured many times. I also started using my Apple AirPods again recently. And when I'm traveling, the one pair of headphones that I live by, which is the Bose QC in-ear headphones, which are active noise canceling and don't sound amazing, but they block out sound perfectly on flights. And the battery life is also very good as well. So anywhere I go, I try to carry these two with me, but that's just my headphone and audio listening setup. And of course I do jam out in my car every single day and that is one of my favorite places to listen to music on Spotify. Otherwise, I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of casual video where I talk about my entire audio setup, the microphones that I have, and also the headphones that I use. And honestly, I'm just not a big audio person. I don't like to spend money on microphones. And over the years, that has been a category that I've definitely overlooked, but I think I've got it now. And I think the audio in my videos does sound pretty good. But in terms of just optimizing the setup, I think there's definitely still ways to improve. So if you guys have any tips, let me know, but also leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions about my setup and I'll try my best to help you out. Otherwise, like I mentioned, all the links are down below in the description as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one.